This is Mrs. Vance, and this is Unit 12 Notes, Part 3. Today we're going to talk about bacteria. Bacteria are, uh, as you remember, uh, prokaryotes. So just a little bit of review. Remember that we uh, prokaryotic cells are very small compared to eukaryotic cells. <clears throat> they do not have nuclei or other um, membrane-bound organelles. They do have DNA, and they have ribosomes. They have cytoplasm. They have a cell wall, um, and... Some of them have internal membranes, but uh, they can have structures like pili or um, flagella. Uh, but they're a whole lot smaller than, than eukaryotic cells, much simpler. <clears throat> and so make sure you remember that bacteria are prokaryotes. Um, as we said, they're, very, they're smaller than eukaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have membrane-bound organelles. But they're very, uh, very common. The collective biomass of prokaryotes is at least 10 times that of eukaryotes. There are some scientists that have said that probably as much as 10% of your weight is basically bacteria because we have a lot of bacteria living in and on our body. This picture illustrates the very small size of them. This, this purple structure here is not a mountain. It is actually the tip of a pen, the head of a pen. I mean the head, but the tip of a pen, the point of a pen. And these little orange things on here are bacteria <clears throat> on the point of a pen. So uh, very, very small. You didn't think a pen was that, that uh, rugged looking, did you? Prokaryotes live in lots of different habitats. Okay, They're very diverse, very widespread. There are some that live in very cold areas, very hot, salty, acidic, you know, alkaline, anything like that. Some bacteria are pathogens, but most bacteria are benign or beneficial. There's um, only about 2% of all known species of bacteria are pathogenic, causing diseases. Um, the rest are either benign, meaning they don't cause any harms, or beneficial. We have several hundred species of bacteria in and on our bodies. They, they are working to <clears throat> decompose your dead skin cells, to make essential nutrients. E. coli that lives in your gut uh, actually helps synthesize vitamin K for you. They also help guard against pathogenic organisms. You're, they're called your microbiome. And I'm going to post a video for you about microbiome so that you can see... Um, some, in, some things about what kinds of bacteria live in and on your body and what they do for you. Prokaryotes in the soil decompose dead organisms. If we weren't for uh, prokaryotes in the soil, we would be, we'd have dead stuff around all the time. It would not rot, okay, without, without uh, bacteria and um, fungi that take care of that decomp decomposition process. So they're very important worldwide. Um, there are Bacteria that are the bacteria are the only organisms that certain bacteria are the only organisms that can use nitrogen straight from the ox from the air, uh, because all other organisms have to have the nitrogen in compounds already. So the bacteria called nitrogen fixing bacteria take care of that for us. We'll talk more about that when we talk about plants and ecology. One of the things that makes bacteria very successful is they have well the, their external features kind of enhance how they act. And, and what they do. There are three common cell shapes that are used for part of the classification of bacteria. Cocci are spherical prokaryotic cells. Their cocci is plural. Cocca, C-O-C-C-U-S, is the singular version of that. Bacilli are rod-shaped. They're also sometimes thread-like or filamentous. Uh, one is called a bacillus. Multiple ones are called bacilli. And then we have spiral prokaryotes that are kind of like a corkscrew. The short and rigid ones are called spirilla, and the longer, more flexible ones are called spirochetes, but they're, but they're both uh, called their spiral prokaryotes. Here we have some examples of cocci. These are cocci that are um, in chains, like streptococcus. So if you've ever had strep throat, that's a type of streptococcus. Here's some rod-shaped bacilli. That probably looks something like E. coli. And then here's a spirochete. Uh, Spirochetes and, and uh, spirilla are less common than cocci and bacilli, um, but they're all around and they're, and they're responsible for actually for some pretty serious diseases. So uh, there are some terms that we use to refer to bacterial structure and arrangement, and there's a worksheet that you'll do that uses that utilizes this information. So this is important. So and, and when you see uh, they're arranged in pairs, for instance, that's called diplo. So these would be diplococcus of some kind because these are round ones. Strepto means they're in a chain. 
then in with the, the abbreviation strep, it's like strep throat, okay? And then staphylo or staph has cells in clumps, like um, clusters of grapes, basically. And so the shape, again, is a bacillus is a rod shape, a coccus is round, and sprillum is spiral in some form or another, spiral or curved in a, in a different way. Um, so if you, if you were going to name these arrangements, like this particular group here, we've got a cluster of circular ones, so that would be a staphylococcus. Whereas these are, this is a pair of rod-shaped ones, and that would be diplobacillus. If we had a whole chain of those bacilli, that would be streptobacillus. So just knowing those terms, and, and again, there's a worksheet about bacterial classification that you will do that utilizes those terms and, exp and, help, and helps you become more familiar with them. Um, most prokaryotes, well, all, yeah, almost all prokaryotes, especially the, the eukaryote, the eubacteria, have a cell wall composed of a substance called peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is a protein and carbohydrate uh, complex, and um, it's, pres it's, it's only present in the cell walls of eubacteria. When stained with the gram staining process, it's a specific process that's used to look for different types of bacteria, <clears throat> the cell walls of the bacteria are either gram positive or gram negative. Gram positive ones have a simpler cell wall with a lot of peptidoglycan, and here's a, here's a gram positive one, and they stain blue, a dark blue or purple under the gram staining process. The gram negative ones have, a, have less peptidoglycan in them, but they have a more complex cell membrane. They have actually an inner membrane and an outer membrane with these lipopolysaccharides on them, and they st stain pink under the gram, positive, gram, uh, gram staining process. There are diseases caused by both gram negative and gram positive ones. The gram negative ones are sometimes a little bit harder to treat. Spe only specific antibiotics work well on those. The cell walls of a lot of prokaryotes are covered by capsules, and these are especially the ones that are infectious. Okay, The capsules are a sticky layer of polysaccharides or proteins, and basically it allows them to stick to a surface, okay? Uh, in the pathogenic ones, it helps them prevent, um, help them hide from basically the host's immune system. And this picture here shows a, a coccus with a capsule attached to a cell in, a t in your tonsils. And so definitely it allows for them to stick in place and cause the disease process that they affect. Some prokaryotes have external structures that extend beyond the cell wall. We have uh, flagella, which are uh, <coughs> long whip-like structures that help prokaryotes move around in their environment. They basically spin kind of like a propeller. And then they have hair-like projections that are called either fimbrae or pili that help them to stick to their substrate or to each other, kind of like Velcro. And um, we're not going to worry too much about the uh, differentiation between fimbrae and pili. Just know that they're shorter structures as opposed to the longer, uh, more whip-like flagella. Um, pro prokaryotes grow really quickly. Their, uh, their replication or their um, cell cycle basically occurs by binary fission. It's much more simple. They've only got one single chromosome, so they don't have to go through the complex process of mitosis. They can rapidly produce a new generation within hours. Some bacteria under, under optimal conditions can uh, replicate as often as every 20 minutes. They can, they can also have a lot of genetic variation by various processes. Spontaneous mutations are responsible for some things, okay? Basically, this, this increases the likelihood that some of the members of the population will survive whenever there's a change in the environment. Um, the genome is typically about a thousandth as much DNA as a eukaryotic genome. They generally have one long circular chromosome packed into a region of the cell called the nucleoid region. They also have usually small additional pieces of DNA called plasmids. And the plasmids are independent of the genome, of the chromosome. Here's the chromosome. This is a bacterial cell that has been killed and it's ejected all its DNA. And so you see this long circular chromosome here, but then you see the smaller ones that are called plasmids. And the plasmids being independent, they can also be transferred from one bacterium to another. Uh, there are some prokaryotes that form specialized cells called endospores that allow them to remain dormant through harsh conditions. This one right here, I think, is um, probably something like anthrax or botulism. The endospore has 
a small amount of, it has the DNA and it has a small amount of cytoplasm with several layers of thick cell wall and it allows it to um, to survive extreme heat or cold as well as dry conditions for a long period of time and then become reactivated when conditions are appropriate for its growth. This is a generalized bacterial cell, just understanding the structures that are here and what is associated with this. So that we've got our nucleoid region with the chromosome in it, lots of ribosomes in the cytoplasm. There's various kinds of food granules you might find in the cytoplasm. Here's a flagellum, okay, and a plasmid DNA, which is separate from the from the chromosome. We have a cell a cell membrane and a cell wall, and this particular one also has a capsule or slime layer. Um, there are pili or fimbrae that stick out from the surface on some bacteria, and then some of them also have a flagella or multiple flagella to move around. And that incidents on part three.